So the total amount of air in your lungs can be divided up into four individual measurements of volume. And as I said in the last slides, volume is measured in cubic centimeters or milliliters. The tidal volume is the amount of air that you are expiring and inspiring during the normal course of respiration. So a quiet tidal volume is that amount of air that you're expiring and inspiring as you're sitting there quietly breathing. I also define residual volume in the last group of slides. So thinking back, I said that even after a maximal exhale, even after I push all the air out of my lungs that I, that I can, there's still air left in my lungs. That is the residual volume. So tidal volume, residual volume. So let's say I'm sitting here quietly breathing. I take a normal quiet inspiration. If I want to keep inspiring, I can. So that amount of air that I can pull in after a tidal inspiration is my inspiratory reserve volume. It's my inspiratory reserve. I can inspire it if I need to. Normally I don't if I'm sitting there quietly chilling. It's my inspiratory reserve volume. Similarly, if I'm sitting here quietly breathing and I push out a normal tidal expiration, if I want to keep pushing air out of my lungs and keep talking, I can that amount of air that I have left in my lungs that I can expire after a tidal expiration is your expiratory reserve volume. So tidal volume, residual volume, inspiratory reserve volume, and expiratory reserve volume. Now let's look at this illustration before we get to capacities. So here's my two cycles of respiration. So here's my tidal inspiration, tidal expiration, tidal inspiration, tidal expiration. So here's my tidal inspiration. Here's the volume above that that I can inspire if I need to. So that's my inspiratory reserve volume up here, above the tidal inspiration. Looking at this tidal expiration, you can see that there is a volume of air below it. There. That volume of air that I can push out after a tidal expiration is my expiratory reserve volume. But as I said, even after I pushed all that air out, I still had air left in my lungs, and that's the residual volume. So, tidal volume, residual volume, inspiratory and expiratory reserve. Those are the respiratory volumes. Sometimes we combine these volumes to take different measurements. The first of these we refer to as a total lung capacity. So looking here, you'll notice that if I add up the volume that is my inspiratory reserve, if I add that to the volume that is my tidal volume, to the expiratory reserve, to the residual volume. That will account for all the volume of all of the air in the lungs. Coming down here, you see that that is noted as being the total lung capacity. So when you say total lung capacity, that is calculated by adding 
your tidal volume plus your inspiratory reserve volume plus expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume. So that's the first capacity. So capacities refer to the combinations of volumes that express physiological limits. So the physiological limit that total lung capacity would express is the amount of air that I'm physically capable of holding in my lungs. I mentioned this on one of the previous slides, vital capacity. This is the amount of air that I can inhale after a maximal exhale. And it is your tidal volume plus your expiratory reserve volume plus your inspiratory reserve volume. So looking at it on this graph. So here's my quiet inspiration, my tidal respiration, tidal inspiration. And at this point, I'm gonna pull all the air in that, into my lungs that I can. And then I'm gonna push all the air out. So if I were to take another inspiration, if I at that point were to inspire all the air into my lungs that I'm capable of inspiring, You see that this is my vital capacity. It is the expiratory reserve volume from here to here, plus the tidal volume from here to here, plus the inspiratory reserve volume from here to here. So once again, vital capacity, it is the amount of air that you can inhale after a maximum exhale. And if you, you can calculate that by adding up expiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume. And depending on where you look, vital capacity might be defined as the amount of air that you could exhale after a maximal inhale. So taking as deep a breath as I can, blowing out that amount of air, that is the slope right here, that is that this giant expiration, and here's the same volume being taken in on this giant inspiration. Doesn't matter how you measure it, how you measure it, that's the same amount of volume. So you can measure vital capacity on an expiration, or you can measure it on an inspiration. Functional residual capacity. This is the amount of air that's left in the lungs after a passive exhale. So passive expiration, after that, you have a lot of air left in your lungs, which is your expiratory reserve volume and below the expiratory reserve volume, you still have your residual volume. So that amount of air is called your functional residual capacity. And we have already defined total lung capacity. So those are your volumes and capacities. You don't use a lot of your vital capacity during quiet respiration. When you go to talk, you're using more of your vital capacity. And the louder you talk, the more of your vital capacity you're gonna be using. And if you're at a football game, we'll say, and you're screaming at the ref, or whatever it is that you're screaming at a football game, you're probably gonna be using a large amount, a large amount of your vital capacity.
So I mentioned that vital capacity is important for speech language pathologists because that is the amount of air that we have available to phonate on, to produce speech with. As you age, in the normal course of aging, your vital capacity decreases. So as you're growing from a child to an adult, your vital capacity is rapidly increasing. But once you get to be about the age of 20, 25, from then on, your vital capacity is gonna steadily decline about 100 milliliters every year. So you can see that graphed here. As you age, your vital capacity lowers. Also, the more weight you have on your body, the more difficult it is for your body to displace that weight for a vigorous inspiration. So the more weight you have on your body, the less your vital capacity is, the lower your vital capacity becomes. The less weight on your body, the greater your vital capacity is. The taller you are, the greater your vital capacity. You have much bigger lungs. Tall guys have huge lungs. The shorter you are, the smaller your vital capacity. <clears throat> As you can see here, females tend to have smaller vital capacities than males, and this is just typically because they are physically smaller on average. All right, so let's look at some more pressures. Let's add some more terms to what we've been discussing. You're already familiar with some of these. Air pressure outside of the body is your atmospheric pressure. You guys know that the air pressure within the lungs within the alveoli is the alveolar pressure you guys know that the pressure between the layers of pleura or the pleural linings is referred to as the intrapleural pressure y'all already know that the only thing we're going to add is subglottal pressure and this is the pressure that is below the vocal folds so if you bring the vocal folds together to produce voice, you're going to have to build up subglottal pressure to blow those vocal folds apart. We use the term intraoral pressure to refer to the air pressure within the mouth. We're not going to use these terms right now, but we are going to come back to them more when we get to phonation. So for now, y'all can ignore the slide here. During the normal course of respiration, alveolar pressure drops to about negative two, negative three centimeters of H2O for inspiration. And then that shifts to about plus two, plus three centimeters of H2O for expiration. And this means for inspiration, minus two or three centimeters of H2O below atmospheric pressure. And then that shifts going into expiration, alveolar pressure becomes more positive about plus two, plus three centimeters H2O of pressure above atmospheric pressure to push that air out. So let's talk through the mechanics of respiration with this information added. So, and we're gonna talk about quiet respiration. So just the diaphragm. Diaphragm contracts and lowers, increasing the volume of the lungs, decreasing alveolar pressure to about minus two, minus three centimeters of H2O below atmospheric pressure, which causes air to flow into the lungs because air flows from areas of higher pressure to lower pressure. 
and this continues until the thorax. This this continues until the diaphragm stops contracting. At which point you have a moment there where alveolar pressure equalizes with atmospheric pressure, and then the diaphragm will begin to relax and recoil back up into the thorax, which is going to decrease the volume of the lungs, which is going to increase alveolar pressure, plus two, plus three centimeters of H2O above atmospheric pressure. And air is always gonna move from areas of higher pressure to lower pressure. So now air is gonna move outside of my body for expiration. So it's important to note that your respiratory system is playing against a stable atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure doesn't change. You change the alveolar pressure within your lungs by moving your thorax.